Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and all other species that dare to listen to this podcast. You're back here at the Woody Allen Retrospective Podcast, where we're continuing to do our special, lovely project called Woody Allen Adjacent. I'm your host, Donald Wonder. A lot of people tell me, you never really introduce yourself. Always introduce James, but then introduce, yeah, I'm Donald Wonder. But you guys already know that because I've been doing this podcast for years. And with me is my host in this journey, James Daniel Walsh. Sir, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm excited to talk about our movie. Cool. So on the last recording, we spoke about, we cashed in our chips and cheekily spoke about a Will Smith vehicle, six degrees of separation. And we had a lot to say about the movie, Will Smith. We just got it all out there. So we appreciate your thoughts. Well, we appreciate you interacting with us on that one. I got a lot of comments directly to me about that. As I, as I expected, talking about the Will Smith shit that everyone's talking about. But yeah, I love that conversation. I think it's a good movie. Go back and check that discussion if you missed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's like a playlist where we've got all our discussions from Woody Allen and Jason up to this point. Check out that playlist. And as always, you can, you know, support us on Patreon, follow us on all social media, blah, 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 blah. Let's get on with the goddamn show. James, this movie was my pick of the month. But would you mind introducing the movie, The Year, and let the audience know what we're talking about today? Today, we are talking about the 1997 film Julian Poe, uh, directed by Alan Wade and starring Christian Slater. Yep. And I got the dates wrong because when I proposed this movie, I thought it was made in the 2000s. But once again, being the 90s baby that I am, I bought another 90s movie. This must be the fourth or fifth time I've been 90s, 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 90s. I've done it again, James. So this is the most 90s movie you've picked. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me, James. I hope you forgive me. I, I mean that in a, in a good way, too. So Okay. All right. Well, let me start. I'm going to go first and say this. Um, I'm going to go in a bit of a different direction and say this. So in my family, there are certain movies that we've always watched again and again and again. And this is one of those movies. This is one of four movies. The other three which are quite popular movies that James, you might have seen, that my family, as a family, we watched in the 90s and we loved. Uh, Legends of the Fall. Yeah. Family loved that movie. Uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Mm -hmm. And Meet Joe Black. Yeah. And this movie here, Julian Poe. These four movies my family would always talk about and quote. And these four movies are dramas. With slight edges of comedy, and but for the most part, I would say they're more leaning towards a drama. This is a movie that my family quotes all the time. There's something dark about you, Mr. Paul. That's what my mum would always say to me. And I have a lot of fond memories with this movie. The reason why I brought this movie up, because the more I thought about it, as we were doing it, Jason, I was like, you know, I can attribute this to a lot of things Woody Allen used to do. You know what I mean? When he used to make simpler movies, and... I'm not sure if this is a perfect fit for Adjacent, to be honest with you, but it's a movie that I find warm to my heart. Rewatching it, I still really enjoy the movie, and I'll talk more about my experience with the movie in depth, but that's kind of my introduction to the movie, my past of the movie. And I want to throw it on to you, James. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard of this movie in any way? And if you hadn't, tell me what you thought about the movie. I think I may have seen a trailer for it or something back in the day because it, it did seem slightly familiar, but I had never seen it before. I I disagree. I think that this is a good fit for uh, Woody Allen and Jason. Woody would have handled it completely differently. Mm. But uh, I kept getting reminded a little bit of Love and Death. Yes. Yeah. And... I mean, this is clearly a more serious movie than Love and Death. And I think Woody could have made a great comedy out of this. Yes. But I was very, very pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it, it, I was saying to my girlfriend uh, this morning, I said, they don't make movies like this anymore. There was a time you would get a movie like this all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm looking... At the, uh, I always do, I always bring up Wikipedia 
when uh, we're talking. And uh, I'm looking at it right now. The box office for this was $51,000. It made basically no money. Yeah. And there's no, Wikipedia has very little information about it. There's no uh, critical reception part or anything like that. Basically, the movie is about Christian Slater coming to this small town and everybody is suspicious of him. And, you know, they're, they don't like strangers in their town. <laughs> and they think, you know, think he, maybe he's a terrorist. Maybe he's a serial killer. Maybe he's on the run from the law. And then he just, they confront him and he just says, I just came here to kill myself. And they're really into it. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I... I was very worried at first. I thought, ugh, it's because these, these people come off instantly as not likable. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's going to turn out they're going to, they're going to try and talk him out of it. And they're going to show him that life is worth living and everything. No, it's the exact opposite. These people want to see him die. <laughs> they are <laughs> really intrigued by this. They're, and nobody tries to talk him out of it at any point. No. And I got a lot of um, religious symb symbols out of this. Like, he is clearly a messianic character. Mm. Um, he's He comes to town and he says, I'm going to kill myself. And everybody just starts. It reminded me also uh, <laughs> a little bit of Life of Brian. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody following him around. I'm not the Messiah. Yeah. You know, yes, you are. I should know. I've followed a few. Um, it <laughs> reminded me of that and yeah. everybody wants, everybody thinks he's got some sort of insight into life and everything. And he's just like, I, I don't know. Just go live your life. I don't know what to tell you. And it's really dark. It's really, like I said, the, the, the poster for the movie, I, I looked at the, you know, uh, uh, and I, and, and the trailer for it too. The trailer m make it look like this sappy romance. Mm. It is not. The the romantic interest played by uh, Robin Tooney is pretty screwed up. And again, she's not there to save him at all. She's like, in fact, when he says he says something like, "I think I could live forever with you," she's like, "No, no, no! I don't want to get in the way of you doing what you need to do." Yeah, this is not a movie they would make nowadays, and it's a shame because this this was a really intriguing very interesting movie to watch while at the same time being funny. Uh, yeah. It's not laugh out loud funny, but I found myself chuckling quite a few times. In the best way, this movie always makes me feel somber because, yeah. you know, the comedic elements are pretty clear. It's a dark comedy in, in most respects, but there's something, you know, somber about every character is trying to find themselves in a way. And I was happy to see the audience scores are favourable. The IMDb reviews are very favourable. Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes is over 60%. Um, I couldn't find any real critic reviews for it. And I scoured the internet for interviews from the director or if Christian Slater has spoken about this. But no, I couldn't find anything. The movie's just too old. And the internet wasn't really popping back in the late 90s for, for small independent movies like this. So I would really love to delve into how the actors felt about this movie but what i will say is that the characters the actors are really you know very natural i think christian slater was a lead actor characters movie is very natural he's a very charismatic actor in my opinion anyway everything he does he's got a lot of charisma and i know a lot of people say he doesn't stray too far away from his own character in most films i would say yes and no you know, more in more recent um, years, he's done phenomenal work. I've I've watched the uh, Mr. Robot with him and Rami Malek, and more recently, he did that true um, series with Alec Baldwin, Doctor Death, which is horrifying, horrifying true story. But Christian Slater and Alec Baldwin, absolutely f fucking amazing. Couldn't highly recommend that series enough, based on true story. But yeah, everyone's you know giving it their all they're just natural this isn't a movie that demands the, the most excellence of acting chops no it's just it feels very natural the actors aren't holding back and one thing you said which just keeps on ringing in my mind especially watching this movie in 2022 they would never ever make this movie nowadays not never. a chance no never 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 because obviously 
the suicidal topic, I could see so many headlines are, oh, they're playing, it's too coy, this is a serious topic, this is so insensitive. It's glorifying suicide. It is It's glorifying suicide and it's making fun of suicide. I could see so many different angles of this. And again, I'm going to jump and talk about something else. There was a series that Netflix did a couple of years ago called 13 Reasons Why. Yeah. Which I watched the whole thing. I thought it was a it was a boozy series and I appreciate what it tried to do. But at the same time, I did see the aspects of the glorification of suicide and the heroism to it. This movie is nothing like that. I honestly think this movie, you know, it's an allegory for a lot of things. I would say, you know, the price of fame, uh, the glorifying, finding yourself, so many things I think this movie does right. But it's lighthearted and it's um, self-effacing as well. I think it's it's just a really nice movie with a lot of subtext if you if you look for it. And it's funny. It's, it is really funny. And again, we're not really going to go into spoilers, but it's dark. You know, it's yeah. a dark ending that I think makes the movie strong. And... Um, I will say that when I think of Woody Allen, I see him in obviously Christian State as well, and his comedic chops would just uh-huh. it would have elevated this to the highest degree because Christian Stater isn't really comedic in this. He's kind of dry and just being normal himself and, you know, going against people who are trying to push him into this and playing playing a I don't know, he's he's he, he's very confused. Woody Allen would play this up for laughs, in my uh-huh. opinion. And also ride the wave of being serious as well that's why when you brought up love and death i was like yes i completely agree because that's what that movie did as well had a, a overall comedic tone but some of the elements in there were more serious you know and they were asking questions about life as well that was serious and this movie does that as well so i really commend this movie and i i just like the fact that people the majority of people who watch this movie appreciate it for what it is it is available to stream on iTunes. I was mistaken. Again, I didn't think you could find it. But digitally, you can find it. It's just not on Netflix. It's not on the streaming platform. You have to pay to actually get the movie. Yeah, I think this movie holds up really, really well all these years later. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's... Christian Slater gets a bad rap. People say uh, he spent his whole career trying to be Jack Nicholson. That's just the way he talks. You know, the two just have a a similar speech pattern. If anything, I think Christian Slater, you know, he he does, he he would do in his younger years, he would do the the -the over-the-top parts, you know, Young Guns 2 and um, Cuffs is the one I always think about. I don't know why. I never saw that movie, but uh, the the trailer for it, for whatever reason, burned into my brain. I've never seen that. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's like he, I think he's a cop in it. It's like from the early 90s, so he's in his early 20s. And hmm. it's like a big over the top action movie. And I, again, I never saw it because it looks awful. Oh, okay. But at the same time, he, he can do things like this, which he's very timid in this, yeah. you know, which is the antithesis of what people think of when they think of his younger performances and stuff like Young Guns 2, where he's, you know, he's always yipping and you know big grin on his face and uh they they pin him with sort of the matinee idol kind of a thing but he he can play very quiet and very timid and very uncertain and you're right woody would have played it It, woody with this this, as, as i'm watching it i'm thinking i'm really glad that this movie exists and i wish that it was also like woody had done a similar movie because yeah. this was this is not i wouldn't classify this as a comedy mm-hmm. and yet what it reminded me of was bananas and sleeper and love and death and the early woody allen movies it's fan, it's fantastically just dark the way that like i said at first i'm like okay he announces you know i'm here to kill myself and everybody at first they're taken aback and you know, I thought, oh, God, this is really going to... I'm supposed to like these people now, aren't I? I'm supposed to, like, think these people are, are, you know, oh, we were wrong about you, Mr. Poe, and we're, you know, here, you know, why don't you go out with my daughter, and why don't you come over for dinner, and we'll, you know, the, maybe the reverend would say, uh, you know, God doesn't want you to kill yourself, and instead they're all like, how are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? 
you know, can we watch? Can we help? Oh, can, taking you know? bets? <laughs> taking bets. <laughs> <laughs> and even the woman who, who says she loves him, she loves him because she she's like, I want you to do this. I yeah. want you to do this. Nobody at any point tries to talk him out of it. And the more he kind of waffles on, oh, I don't know, maybe I could be happy. Maybe I don't want to die. The more they're like, no, 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 no. We, we, we're expecting this at this point. Yeah. You know, and it, it's almost like a, it's, it, you could also, as much as you could turn this into a comedy, you could also turn this into a horror movie. Yeah. This rides such a, a, a thin line between genres. I don't think that there's anybody who is bold enough to do something like this anymore. This is the kind of thing that, you know, and again, the, the box office, it, it didn't, it, I don't know how much it cost to make, but it definitely didn't make that money back. But back in the 90s, you could do that. Back in the 90s, the, you know, the, the big studios would have their independent branch. You know, okay, we're going to put out Independence Day and make, you know, uh, uh, $800 million, but we're also going to put out this little tiny independent movie that is a passion project for somebody. And if we don't make our money back, it's okay because we made so much money on Independence Day. They don't do that anymore. Now it's all or nothing. Now it's, you know, every movie has to be a giant hit. And they don't, things like this don't get through. They, they barely get through on streaming anymore. No. And, you know, I, I Christian Slater's perfect. In yeah. it. I, I wasn't watching it thinking, oh, this would be so much better if it was somebody else. Christian Slater is perfect. Yeah. in this if anything you know there's like i said i feel like there's a a, a certain fairy tale quality to this there's a certain uh I, I i saw like the the hotel owner played by michael parks yeah as almost like he's the devil yeah and the uh the mute deaf housekeeper there played by cherry jones is like an angel yeah because she's the only one that seems like you know She's not going to interfere. She's not going to tell Christian Slater what to do, but she's the only one who seems like she kind of wishes he, he wouldn't kill himself. Yeah. She truly cares. She truly cares. She's the only one that seems to actually care. And it, it, it's got that fairy tale quality to it. I mean, again, I mean, we're not getting into spoilers or anything, but at the end, it feels like I, I could see this being something out of like a, a medieval fairy tale like yeah. how this movie ends uh, while at the same time again bringing it back to Woody Allen I'm watching the end of this movie and I just kept keep thinking about the ending of love and death yeah and this is a more somber version of that it's not the comedic version of it but it it kind of made it made me you're right it's somber it makes you kind of sad but at the same time I was also kind of smiling yeah yes and I don't th know. That's, you you can't do that anymore. You got it in one, James. Um, I have to give a shout out to the music arranger, Patrick Williams. The score or the theme, there's one there's one core arrangement for the music in this, and there's like a variation, and it is beautiful. It's mm. played all throughout and different variations of this theme, and it is just so simple and elegant. And they, you know, they have a lighter, jokey, jovial version and then a darker, somber version. And I just, this time when I finished the movie, I watched all the way through to the credits. Every single drop, because I love the music in this. I think it's great. I think the theme is great. It's just so simple, so simple. And it's so effective. And it just lends to the atmosphere. You know, it's just so great when you give someone the tool and they, and they do so much with it. You know, less is more, as they always say sometimes. And that's why, yeah, this is one of my family's favorite movies. And I want to tell you something, James, that surprised me. Because I was trying to look for clips and stuff. And the only thing I found out about this movie that I never knew is that this movie is an adaptation of a book. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I didn't know that, but I thought it has to be. This yeah. feels like a book. Yeah, it's an adaptation of a Serbian book, actually, and I cannot, and I will not even try 
All right, I'm going to give it a go because just we have to shout out the actual author. Uh, uh, Brandon Mia Skenovic. Let's go with that. It's in the Wikipedia. He is credited in the Wikipedia on the side. And yeah, the original book was written in, uh, is that 1977? And it was called, well, I don't want to say the name of the book because I've, some could call it a spoiler. But yeah, the original book was made in uh, 1977 and it was adapted. So yeah, what I mean, and the Serbian book, I don't, I don't know. I would like to hear the inspiration, how Christian Slater, how the director, had it all felt behind it. But I saw a lot of recognisable actors in this movie as well. The black guy playing the cop, um, uh-huh. the wife, the, the the wife that was trying to sleep with um, Christian Slater's character as well. Um, I've seen them in so many things. I know yeah. I should have their names up right now, but I've, I've got five windows open. But yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a good cast that we've seen before. You will recognise a lot of these people. And, you know, in terms of like the cinematography, you know, it's not, it's, I would say, um, obviously it's a cheap independent film, but it looks appropriate. He's in a small town. You're outside, you're in three or four different places. It's it's um, authentic enough. You know, some some films like this, are more stage play when they only are in one place but this one you could tell that no they they were in one obviously one town maybe outside of a city or something and they just went for it yeah. and yeah this movie makes me i don't know why it makes me feel warm yeah and it's dark but i just i really do love this movie and it's a family favorite and i do think woody's interpretation of it would be different Different enough, I'd love to see it, you know, even still to this day, even though Woody's too old to play the role convincingly and fall in love with a woman, da 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 da. If this movie was made today by another director, I think it would actually probably be either more extreme or so watered down and terrible, it would be worthless. I think it would be one extreme or the other. I don't even think it would be very similar to this. It would just be over the top dark or just mm-hmm. underwater rubbish. That's my opinion. Yeah. And and it's you know like you said you could you could you could turn this into something really dark and uh, and nasty and I think there might be some people who would think that it is like oh you yeah. know maybe maybe they're thinking oh you know pe- this is how people look at like small towns that there are, everybody there is awful which I don't think that's the case you could have set this you couldn't set this in a city because you need the you need the busyness of a small town the busybodies. You need the people who are, you know, they don't have anything else going on, so they're just all up in everybody else's business. But to try and do this now, there would just be too much, you know, oh, we have to be sensitive about this, and we have to be sensitive about that. And this is not a movie that has, this has a different kind of sensitivity. The character played by Robin Tooney is, you know, she's not, she, she's sort of, misty eyed and she romanticizes what Christian Slater is doing, but there's a sadness about her at the same time. There's something funny about her. You know, I love you so much and I can't wait for you to kill yourself. <laughs> and and it's because she's had like dreams about him and all this. Yeah. this stuff. It's very, very much like you could over explain all of this yeah, and, and ruin it. There is a simplicity to this where the story just says, this is just the way this that this is. We're not going to tell you why these people are the way they are. You could have easily made this another half hour longer and overly explained like Robin Tooney's character. And, you know, there's a great bit because, like, you know, as with all uh, messiahs who show up to, to and people turn to them and, and ask them, you know, what, what should I do? Everybody's life is kind of worse when they take his, not even advice. It's not even advice he's giving. He's just, him talking and they're they're putting all of their interpretation into things yeah and there's this great bit where uh the guy that owns the uh the clothing store comes out to him and uh, you know it, it's really kind of sweet the the way that he's sort of like you know I, i've been in love with like i think he said he was in love with the sheriff yeah, yeah. i've been in love with him since like, we were kids and you know, I, you know, and Christian Slater's like, well, you know, do you ever tell him? Well, I could never tell him, you know, my life would be over if I told him. Christian Slater just says something, some b- vague 
platitude about like, you know, well, life's too short to be scared all the time. And so in a movie now, everything would work out. You know, he would maybe say to the sheriff, oh, I've always been in love with you. And the sheriff would say, really? Oh, I've, I've been too scared to admit it, but I'm in love with you too. Instead, like they just cut to him later on and he's standing outside of his store sweeping up and his nose is broken. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, that. okay, that's the reality. That's the reality of like how that interaction would probably go in this place. And we're not going to show it. We're not going to overly dramatize it. It made me, again, it just like so many things in this movie, it made me sad because the guy was so earnest about it, you know, so kind of desperately in love. But it also made me laugh when I saw him standing out there with with a bandage over his nose. I honestly, I can't think of, of too much about this movie that I would criticize. Uh, this is just a really really strong movie with a great atmosphere and a great cast and perfect script. You know, yeah. this is, this is one of those movies that I, I would have probably been trumpeting to people. If I had seen it when it came out, I'd probably 30 years later would be saying, Oh, have you ever seen Julian Poe? That movie's great. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like I missed out having well, not seen I it mean, when it came out back then. I saw it on cable in 1999. You know, so I can't say I was first to, and obviously it wasn't the theatres in, in the UK at the time. I just stumbled upon it, and I've had it on DVD for decades now. And yeah, I, you know, I'm glad. All I can say now is anyone listening who's a, a fan of Union Poll, and you know, when I went on YouTube and I just read the comments in the of the trailer, which do not watch the trailer for this movie. No. It's a bad trailer. It would just spoil. Not only that, but it, it it gets the tone of the movie completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. But the comments, it was good. You know, good to see what people thought. IMDb really had high praise for the movie, which I was glad to hear. And so did Rotten Tomatoes. And I'm just like, you know what? It's a you know, people enjoy the movie, and you know, some you have a lot of these kind of movies. These are the kind of movies I know I'm, I'm going to get on a pedestal now. These are the kind of movies I live for. I love these hidden gems. You know, obviously I've already, I've already watched this movie, but I wish I could... I know there's a hundreds of movies like this. Maybe not hundreds, but maybe a hundred movies like this that I haven't seen that I'm sure James will illuminate me too, or maybe you listening will leave in the comments or something like that. That's what we're trying to do here through Woody Allen. It gave me a taste. Well, even before... I think I watched this movie before I was a Woody Allen fan, to be fair, but it kind of showed my sensibilities in the film which helped me gravitate towards Woody Allen and my family. My brother had that kind of taste as well. It's just nice that, you know, we we all can enjoy a good movie. It's a shame it falls through the cracks, but at the same time, as I said before, you can get it on iTunes. You can buy the movie on iTunes, Google Play. It's just not actively streaming on your Netflix subscription or Amazon Prime subscription or Hulu subscription. So, you know, you're like, Julian Poe, two ninety nine. I never heard of this movie. Christian Slater, man, he's well, should I uh, pull the trigger? Give it a go. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed the movie. I have fond memories of the movie. I'm glad James loves the movie, likes the movie as well. Makes me happy he enjoys the movie. And I hope you listening, if you've never heard of the movie, give it a shot. As we've both said, they don't make them like this anymore. But just keep your expert. I would just say go in with an open mind. Don't have any high expectations even though me and james said we both enjoy it just go in and get ready for a movie that's kind of quirky and you know a bit dark a bit funny and just see see how you feel and and be prepared to not you know the, this is the they, they they throw around the term subverting your expectations anymore and it's to the point where it's lost all meaning but this is a movie that does that right like i said the first as soon as he said he announced i'm going to kill myself i thought oh because i didn't know anything about this movie going in and as soon as i saw, heard that i was like oh man this is just going to be these townspeople that i don't like suddenly trying to be nice people and instead it was the exact opposite and i <laughs> i love the movie for that for just sticking to its gun and, and being like no you know how we didn't like in the beginning we made you not like these people you don't have to they're awful <laughs> and yeah. you know and it, it doesn't it doesn't overly explain anything it just tell it just presents it to you very simply this is the situation this is what's going on 
And a modern movie would give you all this backstory about why Christian Slater was suicidal. We never find that out. We don't know anything about him before he gets to this town. It ends in a way that's a little bit ambiguous, which they wouldn't do anymore. There's nothing in this movie that I can I can think of that I would I would uh, fault it for. This is a this is a five out of five. Cool. Yeah, to seek it out. This is the kind of thing where I, I I'd be curious who owns the rights to it and uh, if they're selling. Because <laughs> be like, hey, I'll, you know, if if I had if I had the money, I'd buy this and and try and and, and promote it because it's it, it'd be for most people it'd be a new movie. So, yeah, uh, absolutely, you should seek it out and spend the three bucks on Amazon or iTunes or wherever and, and give it a watch. Nice. Hey, I'm so glad I threw one to James that he didn't hate. Uh, and we're going to keep it short and sweet and just leave it at that. So if you've watched Union Poe, leave us a comment in the comment section below. Um, James, it's your pick next. What are we going to be talking about next month? Uh, next, we're going we're going silly. Uh, we're going to watch the, I believe it was 1988, Sylvester Stallone starring Oscar, uh, a little uh, mafia comedy that uh, reminds me of Woody's uh, older funny ones. Nice. I like it. So look forward to that. Another little hidden gem. So I haven't heard, seen that movie at all. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, James, if the people want to follow you, where can they go to follow you? How can they get in touch? Uh, you can find me at manic-expression.com and my books are available on Amazon. Yep. Don't forget to support us on Patreon. James's links, the Patreon link, all the content links will be in our link tree link in the description. Look forward to our next discussion. This is a shorter one than we usually have, but sometimes it's just short and sweet. So we're going to love you and leave you till the next recording. Uh, thank you for the support, guys. Stay safe and... Uh, We'll see you on the next one.